So I mentioned the trimmed global outlook. Explain what was the reason behind the downgrade. Well, let me first state that we are in a better place today than we were in October. The trimming down is because of India, abrupt slowdown in one country, and a little bit because of unrest in a couple of countries, Hong Kong, Chile, uh, Colombia. So it doesn't say anything about the overall it growth It doesn't picture. say anything bad about the world economy. In fact, there are three things that are somewhat better today. Uh, one, trade and industrial production seem to be bottoming out. Two, we have been successful with synchronized cutting of in interest rates that help the world economy. And three, China-U.S. phase one deal. What do you think about that deal? Did it go far enough? Or I mean, Obviously, if there is a phase two, that means phase one hasn't gone far, far enough. But uh, were you disappointed to is, see that the tariffs remain? The important thing is that uh, we now have a... Um, capacity to cooperate between two countries that are very critical for global growth. And uh, we would like to see more. We would like to see more predictability because the factor that is holding growth down is uncertainty. Anything that can be done to reduce uncertainty is good for growth. What do you see for China's economic picture as a result of the phase one trade deal? Their economy got hurt harder than the U.S. They, they were more impacted by the downside of tension and so they are benefiting from the upside of an agreement. We actually upgraded our forecast for China by 0.2% as a result of this predictability of less tensions in the area of trade. China is going through a transition from high speed to what they call high quality of growth. So this down, downward path is a natural rea reaction to, to that transition. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, our projection in October was 5.8% for 2020. Now we are up to 6%. And that helps China. It helps Asia. It helps the world. What about the U.S.? There, there seems to be a lot of optimism in the air, not just from President Trump today, but a lot of the CEOs we're talking to a few months ago there were concerns that we were potentially going into recession, watching the yield curve and the slowdown in manufacturing. Yeah. What's well, changed? Well, the, uh, the uh, U.S. economy is doing really well. Unemployment is record low, 50 years record low. Growth is uh, above uh, potentials, second year in a row. And uh, the fact that tra trade tensions are now less <laughs> spreading and uh, dragging investors uh, They're not getting worse. down. <laughs> Things are getting, uh, well, they're actually in, uh, in, in good shape. And the good status of the U.S. economy, good for the rest of the world. Uh, what we see is uh, consumer confidence being very strong, and it is driven by wage growth. Uh, we also see that uh, investment confidence seems to be swinging upward, but... All of this would depend on sustaining a positive uh, uh, relation with the other big economy uh, over time, uh, and it would mm -hmm. depend it, it would depend on how the U.S. is going to to handle the fact that uh, the tax cuts impact is going to slow down. Uh, one good thing for the whole world economy was uh, the active monetary policy. We calculate that half a percentage point of growth last year and this year is a result of this Easing. synchronized yes cut. Well, 49 central banks, 71 cuts. Problem is we cannot rely on monetary policy okay. forever. Well, I was just going to ask, do you think that's over, that, that easing no, we, uh, we expect uh, accommodative policy to continue. Uh, some countries, U.S. In, in that category, still have some more space. But so our recommendation is, is rather than our like? recommendation is please do concentrate on fiscal policy and on structural reforms. Don't rely on monetary policy alone. What do you, what do you think of the president's speech this morning, President Trump? It is uh, an optimistic speech. Uh, very good to have President 
Trump here with a large delegation of uh, secretaries uh, engaging uh, with their partners uh, that uh, uh, adds to this uh, picture of we work uh, together for a stronger world economy. Back to the central banks for a moment. You said, you know, you're expecting some easing to come from around the world. There are questions as to how much power central banks and bullets have left in places like Europe and Japan Not many. to prop up economy. No. no. Not many. And we also have to recognize that the prolonged period of low interest rates does have unintended consequences. Two of them we watch very carefully. First, the built up of debt. Now we are at $188 trillion. Households, businesses, governments are all going into more debt because it is cheap to do so. If there is any reversal of interest rates, that would cause trouble. Second, appetite for risk. When you are pursuing yield, you go for higher risk investments. And that, especially borrowing from non-banking financial institutions for higher yield with higher risk, is also piling up. Does this, are you saying that the stock market looks overvalued to you right now, given the economic fundamentals? What we see is Distorted? that, the, what we, what we see is that uh, low interest rates uh, have uh, pushed more money into equities. Uh, and that is logical. It is to be, to be expected.